examination of the placenta after uh, we have delivered the placenta out as uh, the baby has been delivered. The other time, I think we went through manual removal of placenta and then uh, we practiced when we had the first group with us face to face. So we know that placenta is a crucial organ in the system temporarily when uh, pregnancy begins. But after pregnancy, it doesn't belong to us again. So definitely it, it has to come out. And so this placenta plays its role by satisfying or nourishing the fetus for the whole of the nine months before it comes out. So for all we know, uh, we have been practicing for a period of time and then that we are trying to come out, uh, come out with. But it is very, very important because if after delivery of the placenta, it is not properly examined, we all know the consequences that may follow. Uh -huh. And so we just want to discuss around it, what are some of the consequences that may result as a, a, a result of placenta, which is not properly uh, examined after delivery. What can cause uh, harm to the mother's condition postpartum period? So we all know that after the placenta after delivery of the baby, the placenta has to be delivered. But then there are other techniques that needs to be applied before the placenta. So to the house, let's uh, talk about the techniques applied before this placenta can be delivered. So anyone can answer. Ma, please, my hand is up. All right. Okay. So when the baby is delivered, we mm -hmm. give our oxytocin 10 units anterolaterally, middle third of the thigh, 90 degrees. Then we mm -hmm. wait for signs of placental separation. That is lengthening of the cord, gushing out of the um, blood, and then feeling the placenta in the vagina. Then when we want to deliver the placenta, either we clamp closer to the perineum, then we hold the forcep up and down motion to deliver, then we counteract the uterus. That is, we put our hand at the symphysis pubis to prevent uterine inversion. Then we deliver the placenta up and down <coughs> gradually. When the placenta is seen at the vulva, you leave your hand, that is at the symphysis pubis. Then you form a cupped hand to receive the placenta. Then you drag it gradually because sometimes the whole placenta can come out, but with uh, membranes, thin membranes, very long. So you drag it gradually. Sometimes you twist it gradually to deliver the placenta and its membranes. When you, uh, you can also wind around your hand. That is if you are not comfortable with the faucet, you wind the cord around your two fingers. Then you pull up and down gently to deliver. 
when the placenta and membranes are fully delivered, you hold it in both hands to expose the maternal surface. You hold it together because if you hold it apart, you may feel like there are loopholes in between. You hold it together, then you examine the maternal surface and the membranes as well. If there is a loop or a missing loop or a hole somewhere, that, that gives you an indication that there is a retained um, placenta. Tissue. You are done exactly. You hang the placenta. Then you observe the membranes as well to make sure the chorion and the amnion are in. <laughs> when you've examined both the chorion mm -hmm. and amnion, the placenta surface, the maternal surface, and all are intact, then you are certain that even if the woman is bleeding, you will least suspect retained products, uh, retained placenta or its membranes. Then you discard it into your placenta bowl and you add 0.5% chlorine. Sorry, 0.5% chlorine solution and you discard. So a retained placenta or membranes prevent the uterus from contracting, thereby leading to PPH. So that's what I can say about it. Thank you. Now, please, I'm done. Hello. Hello. Ma, please, I'm done. Thank you very much. Sasha, thank you very much. Any addition? Hello? Link in our audio, Mrs. Hi, sir. Hi. I'm before. Michelle, I'm going to start getting your tooth. And someone from, I think, for you, she's saying that she doesn't have the link. But I believe that you sent it, Aisha. Hello? Hello? Hi, Ma. Ma. Uh -huh. Someone from Koforidia, Nerissa, she's saying that they, they don't have the link. Oh, Sister Mat uh, Matilda kept it at the ref page. Me, myself, I was not even aware, so she prompted me. And when I checked, my Sister Kate has already kept it on her page. Uh -huh. so, so I don't know why she's saying that. Rev's page. She should go yes. there. Okay. Thank you. So, like she rightly said, but we find ourselves uh, sometimes not examining the placenta after delivery. Maybe after bringing the placenta out, just a quick glance, and we feel that everything is out. That's why sometimes we do get occasional uh, bleedings here and there. When then we go inside to bring out, you may see a very tiny membrane. Like you rightly mentioned that some of the membranes are very long. So if you don't take time to deliver slowly and gradually, you may eventually pull out in a sudden way, and then the tip of the membrane may get torn and then retain in the uterus, which may cause 
PPH. And so in examining the placenta, we, we also have to check or uh, examine the core and the, the vessels, the cord insertion, the fetal surface, the maternal surface, including the membranes. So basically it is not only looking at the maternal surface, but all the other areas as well. So, somebody, hmm? we keep, uh, quickly we'll go on to the trolley and then uh, try to examine the placenta. We know that the insertion of the cord is not always centrally situated. It may be at the edge. It may be close to the edge. It may be at the center. Whichever way the placenta is situated, we always want to find out that uh, the whole placenta is delivered. I witnessed a case where the placenta was being delivered, but eventually the membranes pulled out and then the person felt that she had delivered the placenta. And because she didn't examine that everything has come out, the woman was actually thrown into a problem of bleeding, 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 until she had about two kinds of blood. And then coupled with the uh, bladder being full, that was also another contributory factor which led this woman bleeding until she had about two kinds of blood. So when the bladder was drained, the placenta or the whole loop, the lobes were inside, so they all came out. And so when the placenta came out, then we realized there were no membranes and there were no cord. It was only the whole lobe of the placenta in the maternal, uh, the, in the uterus. And so uh, the placenta, after delivery must be examined. In fact, it is a must because if you make a little mistake or you are negligent about this, you will throw the woman into a serious problem. And so care must be taken to note that. So in as much as we are looking for the placenta insertion, maternal surface, fetal surface, the cord is also of an important. So why do you think it's necessary to observe the cord, the vessels within the cords? Hello. Hi. Uh -huh. Why do you think it's important and necessary to examine the cord, looking at the vessels? Um, my stand to be corrected, but I think um, absence of either a vein or a vessel indicates um, a problem with the kidney. I stand to be corrected, I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have mentioned something, another point.
Any answer from the class? And so it's important, even though it's the maternal, uh, we are talking about delivery and the uh, delivery of the placenta in its examination. And so if we come to the court, it means that it related to the baby. And so one has said that absence of one, uh, after uh, absence of one vessel, may indicate a kidney problem. And I ask if anyone has anything to add up. So this is a crucial point because it will help us to, if we have to refer the baby to see the pediatrician, as early as possible. If we see these things, then we can also see around the cord, through not of the cord, which may also be a problem with the baby, especially causing hypoxia in utero, because the placenta may form a knot which will block the passage of oxygen and the nutrients to these fetus. So if this baby is not delivered as early as possible, and it may be noticed when the, uh, the fetal heart rate will be fluctuating and this baby will be thrown into fetal distress. And so even though we are looking at the placenta, our concern would also be noticed when there is any anomaly on the cord. And so we look at all these areas and then we try to help save situations when it comes to the stage where, and then we know we have the members as an easy After delivery of the placenta, we still have our uh, aprons and our glass on. And so it's a continuous procedure which we do carry out. But what is mostly important is that after the delivery of the placenta, uh, we massage the uterus and spare all the cloths that are inside. We inspect the perineum for any tears. But we have to examine the placenta before we take this woman to her bedside. Because sometimes if she sends, if everything to us is normal, the woman goes to her bed, in no time you realize that she may be bleeding again. Or you may feel that, no, we have to re-examine this woman. And then sometimes on, on her bed, it may be very uncomfortable. But if we are able to uh, do all the necessary things before we send her to her bed, that would save us, save our time, save the woman, and then prevent uh, any problem that we think may happen. So, 
So like we said, always worry uh, it's not delivered as we want it to be delivered. Because like I said, it's a temporal organ. So after delivery, it has to go out or come out. And so we do all that we can to make sure of this placenta. So we will see on the placenta two arteries and then a vein. So like we said on the cord, if maybe a vessel is missing, it may have fetal anomaly. And basically it has to do with the kidney, as we said. And, and so it will also help us to uh, refer or transfer this baby to the right place. When we examine the baby after everything is said and done, we examine the baby at the labor room so that we can note and then maybe in our writing of uh, a refer something, we may add on the court two vessels were identified. Uh -huh. So that may be, give us a clue that there is a problem with this baby. And so, like she said, when we are delivering it, so this is a, a true part of the, a true knot of the cord. You know, as this baby rotates around the, the uterus, in journey, trying to find a way out, sometimes the baby may wind the cord around itself and it may form a loop and may come out and eventually, as the baby pulls backwards and forwards, the cord may form a knot, and that will cause the baby to be in the distress. The, like I, I initially mentioned, we can only locate uh, a distress with the counting of the fetal heart rate. That is why it's always necessary and important to count the fetal heart rate for 60 seconds, and then we note the cons its consistency and then uh, the number of beta hats rate as a parameter for us to monitor this baby. Okay. So this is just an example. Mom made something. So the chorion and then the amion. And so after this baby comes out, we look at the 
data surface, which has to be bluish gray color. Before we look at this section, and then we open up, try to open the membranes. Sometimes it's not very simple. You have to slip, try to slip and separate the chorium mm. from the animal before we can get it. And then after that, we open to the maternal surface. Like our sister rightly said, we hold it in our palm to see if all the lobes are intact. It's not only the lobes that we want to see that they are intact, but we also want to see that the membranes are intact. So when you hold it up, for example, in this way, you feel that where this baby came through will be rounded, to be in a round form. Um, and so if at the end you realize that it's not it's round, not but there is a breakage somewhere, then it draws your attention that the placenta is not complete. So I have to take my time. And then at this time, you massage a spark cloth, but you have to go inside the uterus and then try to scoop and bring out. By the time you come and realize that some of the cloth forms may carry the retained or the slipped uh, membrane out together with it, then you are sure that if a lobe or two is missing, you see that there will be a, a deep depression within the maternal side. And that will prompt you that a lobe has retained in the uterus. And so you also have to go in laterally and come out, trying to bring out whatever is inside. So we know it's not easy, it's not a, a pleasant situation, but you have to comfort the woman and then explain what you are really doing for her to help her and save her life. So students coming up, please, when they come to the facilities, let's do our best to help them go this way. You know, if a delivery is done and then care is not taken, yes, we may do it, but at the end, we may encounter some problems, as I have already mentioned. So examining the placenta is of a crucial uh, point which we have to pay attention to it. So that we may know now, I, I learned that some of the uh, relatives always want to take their placenta school. I don't know how true it is, but if it becomes necessary that it is true, it means that it has to be fully documented and then let them sign against what we have written. Because some people may feel that it is their custom that they always they, they want to carry the placenta home and bury it or whatever they want to do with it. Otherwise, we have to empty the placenta into in some areas we have placenta pits. When, where it is that in some place where the placentas are kept. Others would have to um, dispose it into a trash bag, which, is, which has a particular color, especially the yellow color will carry the placentas and the, all the blood uh, and the fluid that are collected so that it will be disposed of into the refuse area. And so basically, examining the placenta is of prime importance to the midwife. So if the placenta will not be, then like we said, it has retained. So something must be done to bring it out. If it's ready to come, then we must bring it out as we brought the baby out. And then we must make sure that everything with regard to the placenta is uh, fine and well, that it's not going to cause any problem to the mother. Because if there is any problem, the midwife will be uh, troubled 
worried why this placenta has not come or why after delivering the placenta there is a problem coming out. So this is just the examination of the placenta, very, very crucial and important to the network. Any question is welcome. Any addition is also welcome. Any subtraction that you think is not um, necessary or important in it can also be corrected. So we are done with examining the percentage examination center. Please any question. Any question? Hello. Hi. Hi. Any question, please? Just uh, please. Uh, please, some of us join a bit late. So if you don't mind and you can summarize for us. Uh, we couldn't you get the link late. earlier. So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so we join a bit late. So the, if you can summarize all that you did for us. Uh, We'll be very glad. Thank you. You. Yeah. We went through examining the placenta as a matter of importance to the midwife because the placenta is uh, temporarily an organ that has to be discarded after pregnancy. It's not needed. So when the placenta is not out, the middle, okay. And so there was the, a summary of the technique of the placenta. After the baby has come out, what do we do? We have to palpate for uh, to rule out if there is no second baby before we give our oxytocin. And then we deliver the placenta actively. And the active delivery of the placenta do with clamping the cord closer to the perineum. We use one hand or the left hand on the pubic bone, pushing just backwards to prevent it from inversion. And then we try to deliver the placenta when there is a contraction. Uh, there should be a contraction before we deliver, otherwise the uterus will invert. And so when there is a contraction together with all that is needed, we mentioned the, the elongation of the, of the cord and all that, then gushing out of blood, different contraction. That tells you that the placenta has separated its fan wall. And so you hold it with a clamp and then you pull downwards and then upwards until you realize that the placenta is in the vagina which is visible. Now, when you see that, you let go the hand that is holding the cord, then bring the two hands together, hold it as a cup, and then you twist the membrane, deliver slowly up and down till all the membranes, sometimes some of the membranes are very long. Once it is long, if you don't take time, this placenta may, uh, the, the membrane may detach and cause bleeding. 
And so the placenta is delivered in that way. And then eventually, after the placenta has come out, the first thing is to massage the uterus into contraction. Now, after the massage, you clean the baby, inspect for any tests, Oh, then we hold Please mute yourself. You are sharing your screen as well. Olivia. So you hold the placenta this way, then the membranes will hang. And you see a rounded area from the membranes where the fetus came out. And so you observe the fetal surface, which is bluish gray, and then the cord as well, looking out for the number of Ports, vessels that are seen. And we mentioned that a missing uh, vessel may indicate a fetal anomaly, which usually will say has to do with the kidneys. You may also find true knot of the pores as these features uh, journey around rows in the you try, uh, yeah, in, in the uterus, it may wind the cord, form a loop, come out of it, and then it may form a loop. And uh, it may form a knot, which, when you check the theta hat, it may give us a inconsistent theta heart width, which may result in theta distress. So sometimes theta distresses. Some may be due to true knot of the cord because it is blocking or not allowing the flow of oxygen and then blood into the fetal area. And so this baby will be hypoxic in utero and then it may need an immediate care. 
then you turn the membranes, try to separate the membrane, the chorion from the amion, so that you realize that, yeah, you know, the chorion is fragile and the uh, amion is very, very tough and it doesn't easily get torn. So that one is closely adhered to the baby. Now, when we are said and done with that, we bring the membranes, the maternal, we turn the maternal side into our palm and make sure that, run our hands to make sure that all the loops are intact. If there is a missing loop, you see a depression, and that depression will tell you that there is a, a lobe that has get torn and is in the uterus. And with this, you have to go inside and then bring this missing lobe to make the placenta complete. Sometimes when you hold onto the membranes, you realize that the membranes will be ragged. And because of that, um, you see that a tip or some of the membranes has gone, got, gotten torn and is in the uterus. So that one to you go in and scoop everything out. And for all you know, uh, missing lobe or the torn uh, membrane is in the uterus. Hmm. And so we shouldn't deliver the placenta, leaving the lobes inside. There was a, an incident where the placenta, somebody felt that she had delivered the placenta, but all she realized the placenta, the membranes slipped off uh, whole lobes he delivered its weight together and the loaf was rather inside the uterus. So if there is not a proper examination of the placenta, some of these things may happen. Go to the of the placenta and then examining it before you let the woman go to lie on her bed is of crucial importance to us. So basically that is the, just the examination of the placenta. We'll ask if anyone has a question and I think she can send it or tell us. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, any Thank questions? Thank you very much. It's welcome. Any addition to you can be brought up if, if there is any. <laughs> Hello, placenta examination. Hello, sister. Hello. Please, someone is asking on the chat board. Mm -hmm. If the placenta, uh, removing the placenta, how is it supposed to be done? Is it downwards and backwards or up and down? We want a it's down, it's please. delivering the placenta is downwards and upwards. So when you hold on to the cord, after making sure that the uterus is contracted, you hold it steadily downwards, then upwards. So you realize that when you pull it downwards and the, it's really separated, you see the ball coming, then you go upwards and then forward. When you see the whole lobe inside the vagina, then you let go hand both on the cord and on the uh, pubic bone, then you hold to the placenta in a cup form hand, and then you deliver slowly and then up and down for the whole membranes to come out. So you don't uh, rush to deliver the placenta 
without taking notes or taking care of the membranes. Otherwise, if it's falsely brought out, the membranes may get torn and left in, and that can cause leakage. Thank Have you, I answered the question? You are welcome. Yes, please. Okay. All right. No more questions. Hello, sister. Hello. Um, please, when you realize that some of the membranes are torn inside, uh, or the loops are inside, um, we are supposed mm -hmm. to enter and then remove them, right? Yeah. And looking at our yes. clients, is most of the time it's not easy entering to even remove certain. So I want to find out if there is any other way um, that we can do to help them putting our hand inside to get the remaining products. If there is any other way, apart from maybe setting up your Cinto and all that, is there any other way we can do that? Because it's really, most of the time, it's a tough time when you want to enter and remove certain things. Thank you. Maybe if you don't want to enter, the only thing is to send a woman to the theater for it to be done under anesthesia. Or better still, if the retained or the fragments you realize that is plenty, you can give the woman an adjacent. Example will be petidin, whereas the IV infusing with oxytocin lacks the woman before you can uh, remove the, uh, the remaining or fragments in uterine. Uh -huh. But if it's just a simple, let's say it's a membrane, talk to the woman and try to go and bring it out. If there is much resistance, then you can give the analgesics. And then the other time you mentioned that retained, if the placenta, the whole placenta is actually retained, that one, before you go in, you have to give the analgesics to make sure that the woman is relaxed before you enter in. If at the periphery you feel that, use your judgment and realize that uh, this one, there is a, a problem. I mean, that one, then you have to refer the woman to the nearest facility where she may have access to a theater services. Hmm. Okay, mommy, um, thank you, you have, very much. You may have another way of helping this woman. Because you'll be considering that it's painful and it's not easy for the woman to cope with the pain. Well, especially if after the placenta has retained the uh, a lobe or membrane has retained and she's bleeding profusely, you can't stand looking at this woman uh, bleeding like that. At least something must be done. Once the infusion is on, and then you encourage her. And you know, sometimes when the, the woman is bleeding, and then you do the massaging and expel the floss very well. The, the, the retained membrane or the retained loop may come out. So it's on our part to do uh, massaging of the uterus into contraction, then expelling from the fundus downwards, which may help bring out the retained products to save 
the woman. Any more questions? Hello, any more questions? No. No questions so far. Hello. 
Hai. Halo. Hai. Hi. Yeah. Hi. If there are no questions, then we can call it a day. I must have given Most of you have already dropped. So. Is the network, sister? We are there. You are there. Yes, yeah, sister. We are all here. <laughs> Thank you. 